This lecture segment looks more closely at pointer types and also shows how to pass pointers as function parameters. So continuing from lecture segment A, let's look at a, a different kind of pointer, f pointer, declared here on line 9. This is a pointer to a float. And on line 25 down here, it's uh, assigned the address of f1 uh, as its target. Uh, variable we declared as well in line 9. The situation here works just like the integer pointers we used in lecture segment A, but it illustrates an important point. Pointers have types. And just by the way, I'm going to draw the arrow with F pointer, but I'm not actually going to put the address of F1, although we could probably guess it's 9944. Uh, we'll use the arrow abstraction alone. Now, a pointer's type determines what kind of variable may be its target. F pointer, for instance, may point only to float variables, uh, not to ints or cares or other types. And I pointer, one that we discussed earlier, may uh, point only to ints. Any attempt to point these pointers to other types causes a compile error. And assigning from a pointer of one type to a pointer of another type also results in a compile error, with one exception, which you'll be asked to research at the end of uh, this segment. Now, at first glance, it might seem odd to require such a limitation. I mean, after all, an address is an address. Why not just let pointers point to anything? But if we dereference a pointer, the compiler needs to know what type of data to expect as the target. If I write uh, 2 divided by star i pointer 1, is that an integer division or a floating division? It, it depends on the target type of i pointer 1. Since i pointer 1 is a pointer to an int, the compiler can be sure that its target is an int, and so integer division would be in order in this case. So moving on to the next uh, major topic in this segment, pointer parameters. Among the things you may do with pointers is pass them as parameters. And let's start by looking at line 27's scanf here. This uh, scanf is supposed to read a floating point value into f1, but it uses f pointer as a parameter. And note, there's no ampersand there. Now, for all the scolding you've heard about never forgetting the ampersand in a scanf, we'll be hitting more and more cases where the ampersand should be omitted, and this is a good example. Let's look at why. We could have used ampersand f1 as the scanf parameter here instead, with the same outcome. As the comment indicates, the reason for the ampersand in all those cases when you've used or forgotten it uh, in a scanf is that scanf needs to know where the variable that it's supposed to fill in is. If it's going to read a float value from the input and put it somewhere, you need to tell it where to put the float value. If you just used f1 as the parameter, you'd be passing f1's current content, not f1's location. But the current content is irrelevant since the scanf is about to wipe it out by replacing it with new content. What is relevant is F1's address, and that's what scanf expects you to pass. This is why the ampersand is so critical. If, for instance, you make the common beginner's mistake of scanning in, say, I1, uh, thus uh, scanf uh, percent DI1, as in the transcript, then you'd be passing I1's content, uh, perhaps 7, for instance, from our example code, or 5, as I think we have it right now, where scanf expects the address of I1 instead. A scanf will mindlessly read an integer anyway and place it in memory, but at address 7, not, say, address 9936 where I resides. You might have had data you cared about at address 7, but it's gone now. This is why you've been told always to add that ampersand. Scanf expects, in effect, to be passed a pointer parameter, an address or pointer value. But going back now to line 27, we can see that f pointer already has the address of f1 in it. So by passing f pointer alone, you are passing the address of f1, and the ampersand is not needed. So here's question one for you. Okay, if the, if the ampersand is not needed here for the reasons we said, maybe we should just add it to be sure. Uh, you can never be you know, too safe after all. So if I said scan f percent f and dropped an ampersand in there. Is there any harm in that? 
What bad thing does that do? And specifically, where would the scanned floating point value that would be read by that line go? Pause and think. Coming back from pause, the answer is that if I did that, it would pass the address of F pointer to scanf, and that would be telling scanf to write the new float value into F pointer itself. The float value would actually go right there. Now, pointers being variables in their own right do have addresses, so we can get the address of F pointer if we want to. I didn't draw them on the diagram since that would have made it even more confusing. No data would go into F1 in the case we're discussing, though, and F pointer itself would be trashed. Some floating point value uh, would be put in there, uh, and that, uh, when viewed as a, an address, is just random garbage. So, don't want to do that. Okay, so let's create a pointer parameter of our own now. The uh, double function up on line 3 here has a pointer declaration for its parameter arg. And I've drawn a picture of arg up here to go with it. And it dereferences arg several times in the body of the code here. So let's trace a call of double and see how this works. To pass a value to a pointer formal parameter like arg, we need an address as the actual parameter in the call as on line 29. And here we're passing the address of f1 to double. And by the way, at this point, let's assume that f1 contains 10.0 due to the uh, line 27 scan of that we were just discussing. And so then the other type of parameter, this copies the actual parameter in the caller into the formal parameter in the header. But what is copied into arg is the address of f1. So we're setting arg up to point to f1 like that. This means that these dereferences of arg in the uh, line fork are dealing with f1. When we say star arg1, what we're actually going to get is f1. So line 4 adds f1 to itself to double it. And when double returns then, f1 will contain 20.0 as the output now down here in the diagram also show, printing out the result of the call, double of 10.0 is 20.0 from line 30's printf's. So you can visualize arg and any other pointer parameter as sort of a little arm, if you will, reaching back into whatever you want it to point to in the caller and letting you modify the value by dereferencing the pointer. And such parameters are one of the most common uses of pointers in C. So, question two here. What would happen if we declared double this way instead? We just uh, kind of get rid of all those extra stars and uh, leave it as float arg and arg equals arg plus arg. Kind of like that. Would, uh, and down in the call, of course, we'd pass f1 directly as well. Get rid of that ugly ampersand. So, would this be just as good? And pause and think and... Coming back, now this is a, sort of a, a really a C101 question. It would not work because arg would be a copy of F1. And all I'd be doing is making arg, the float now, be equal to 10.0 and <clears throat> doubling it to 20.0, but F1, the original value, would be unaffected. So doubling arg would not affect F1. We need it the way it was for it to work. Now, a broader point of view here. C parameters are call by value, meaning the formal parameters in the function are copies of the actual parameters passed to them. And changing the formal parameters won't change the actual parameters. In some cases, you'd rather have changes to the formal parameter reflected in the actual parameter so that you can communicate information from the function back to the caller via the parameter. A parameter used this way is called an out parameter, since it sends information out of the function back to the caller. Many languages offer call-by-reference parameters that have this behavior and can be used as out parameters as a built-in feature. Uh, for instance, in Pascal, you add the keyword var ahead of the parameter declaration to get pass-by-reference behavior. In C++, you can add an ampersand. In C-sharp, you add ref. C, by contrast, doesn't officially have call-by-reference parameters, but you can fake them perfectly well 
by using pointer parameters as we just did. And reviewing the somewhat tedious syntax, you must 1. add an ampersand to the actual parameter to pass an address, and then 2. declare the formal parameter to be a pointer, and then 3. dereference the formal parameter whenever you want to use the uh, use it in the function to reach back to the actual parameter that it refers to. If you can live with that, you can get pass by reference behavior. Note, by the way, that a, a pointer parameter is still officially passed by value. Directly modifying the parameter will not affect anything in the caller. The pointer parameter is a copy of the address or pointer that was passed, an independent copy. It's the target that is passed by reference, and you must dereference the parameter following the arm back to the target in order to get the call by reference behavior on the target of the parameter, not on the parameter itself. So question number three here. There is one type of C pointer, and this is external reference uh, research that I want you to do. There's one type of C pointer that is special. It can point to and be assigned from any type of variable or any type of pointer. What type of C pointer has that behavior? Again, pausing and presumably coming back from a bit of external reference work in Kernahan and Ritchie or websites. What you should have discovered is that a void star pointer is a generic pointer. It can point to anything. And we'll look at void star pointers more closely in a later lecture.